What's going on, everybody? Today, we got to talk about Paragon boards and legendary nodes because I think everyone is kind of thinking about this the wrong way, at least the people that I have spoken to. And that is that legendary nodes are kind of the core focus of your build. Now, initially, when we kind of just took a brief look at these um, way back a couple months ago, I think all of us, including myself, were looking at these legendary nodes and thinking of them as build defining. But I think that when you start to dive into the Paragon nodes and behind me, you could see, I will leave a link to this site down below, but this site has all the data mined Paragon boards so far for all the different classes. And I wanna focus on Rogue today because it's the one I've dove into the most. The legendary nodes aren't nearly as powerful for builds as the glyph and rare node system that the game has, as well as the magic nodes, which is kind of funny because if you look, oftentimes the rare and magic nodes are taking up roughly around 30% of the board, which is kind of contradictory to the initial meme, which is it's just stats, right? Regardless here, um, the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that you start off with a start Paragon board without a legendary node. So a lot of people don't um, know this, but this is a Paragon board that you're forced to have. And that means that when you start out, you're going to have to earn your way towards that attachment gate and then unlock your first Paragon board outside of that. Now, from what I've seen is each class has eight different Paragon boards. If I were to go ahead and let's say um, swap over to Barbarian, if we go ahead and zoom out, you could see there are four plus four plus the start. So eight additional ones and then the start node. But if we hop back over to Rogue, going over some of the legendary nodes, you'll start to notice these are very powerful effects. But depending on what build you're running, these can honestly kind of be worthless. For example, here, one of them is Eldritch Bounty. When you attack with an imbued skill, you gain 20% resistance and 20% increased damage for that imbuement's element for six seconds. Cool. I get essentially, let's say you're using a poison imbuement build, or let's say you're running Twisting Blades with poison imbuement. That means you're going to get 20% increased damage for poison. That seems okay, but your Twisting Blades doesn't necessarily do poison damage. And so this isn't necessarily a 20% DPS increase at all. Here we have Tricks of the Trade. Your Marksman skills grant your next cutthroat skill 25% increased damage, and vice versa. Now, this could be quite solid, especially in a Twisting Blades build, as I mentioned, because your um, basic puncture in the early leveling process is considered a marksman skill, which can get, grant your Twisting Blades increased damage. So can be decent in there, right? Cheap Shot times 5% increased damage for each number of enemy that's crowd control up to 25%. Maybe there's a build that can get use out of that one. Deadly Ambush, uh, increased critical strike damage to enemies affected by your trap skills, and the list goes on and on and on. There are some very, very powerful bonuses in the correct builds. However, we have to remember that each one of these Paragon boards has a glyph socket, and oftentimes that glyph socket is relatively far away from your legendary nodes. For example, here, here is one where let's say we connect, I don't know, off on one of these nodes, but we're gonna have to go all the way through to that middle of the node or middle of the Paragon board, and then go all the way around to pick up that legendary node. Because we want the glyph nodes every single time. Because the glyph nodes, remember, are the glyph sockets, can socket in a glyph that is upgradable, that can eventually be better than the legendary bonus itself. Um, for example, we've seen some poison damage increasing, which is really powerful on the rogue, especially with the poison immunement. Um, we've seen a bunch of other different uh, Paragon or other glyph sockets um, from the different dev streams and these are massive bonuses right so glyph sockets are the number one priority and if that's the case why even bother going for a legendary node when you can just go for an additional glyph node right and max out the value but you also have to consider if you're going for those glyph nodes okay oftentimes those are coupled with a couple of rare nodes so the point of this video is to explain that we want to focus on okay where are our rare nodes what our bonuses are we getting from those and then also how valuable can those be towards our build and i was looking at one here um i forgot the uh, name here but there was one uh, that gave additional damage for our core skills which has been super super great this was the one here um this one if you unlock here 
you can see there's a couple of different rotations, but in the very bottom right corner, you can see non-combo, uh, non-damage combo points bonuses are increased by 33.3% when you spend three combo points. What this means is, let's say you're running Twisting Blades again, <laughs> it's the easiest example for all these, you get movement speed and extra damage when you have three combo points. That means that your movement speed is gonna be increased. Okay, seems okay, but that means that I have to start on this side, right? And then go on my way to the Pleasury node, and I'd miss out on the Glyph node, or if I wanted to start here, I'd have to pick up the Glyph node and then go all the way across the board. And you don't really want to pick up a ton of the common nodes, right? The common nodes aren't nearly as good as the magic and rare nodes. But if you look here, this Glyph socket, I can slot in, let's say that poison damage Glyph that we mentioned earlier, that's going to increase my damage against poison enemies, and then go ahead and pick up, let's say this lawless one, which is gonna give me extra armor, extra dex, which doesn't seem amazing, but there's also the 28% core skill damage that I can pick up, along with a ton of additional core skill damage around here, which is absolutely massive. And then I can come back over here, which has another, um, actually it's, I think it's, um, this one with extra core skill damage around, yeah, the magic nodes here, right? And we can pick up extra basic skill damage, right? That could be very, very solid. Or even, let's say we did want to go for something over here, we would be picking up resistance to all elements and potentially armor and potion healing, right? So you can see the rare nodes over here are just far worse. Typically, in your general build, you kind of want to focus on damage and then get the survivability that you need. And so going for this is just not really nearly as exciting. So getting core skill damage could be massive. And again, that's the key is to look for those rare nodes that are really, really big. Um, for example, here we have Dex and Life, 10% damage. Ooh, that looks pretty good, right? And then we can pick up 5% damage here, 5% damage here, 5% damage here, and we can go out immediately into this Glyph Socket, and then we can pick up Life and Dexterity to give us additional stats, right? The point is, we really want to focus on those glyph sockets. The glyph sockets are the core pieces. And in addition to the glyph sockets, you're going to see those rare nodes and those magic nodes that can give you massive bonuses. But the last thing to consider, and I will have a full guide on the Paragon system around May 30th um, at that time. But when we consider the glyph sockets, oftentimes they have, these have unlocked requirements for intelligence or dam dexterity or strength or willpower in the area. For example, um, if you get additional dexterity, you might be able to get additional stats on top of what you're getting from that glyph socket. So you have to consider what glyph socket am I going for? How many plain nodes are there or normal nodes that give me those stats or magic nodes that give me those stats that I want? how many magic nodes are there, and what are the rare nodes that I'm getting in terms of value. I think this is a way bigger consideration for people than the legendary nodes themselves. And in fact, by my suggestion, actually, um, I'm gonna say this is a suggestion, not guess, because um, after running some of the numbers, it looks like these rare nodes are gonna be far better. And again, I'll have a full video diving into all this topic later on. But you can see here, going through a glyph socket and then immediately going into the next paragon node and not even bothering with the legendary uh, node unless it's relatively close seems to be the ideal strategy uh, if again you can pick up a legendary node if it's close or if it's not super big investment but again you're going to get typically way more value from those glyph nodes glyph sockets and those rare nodes value around you because oftentimes getting that legendary node is surrounded by normal nodes which is just a kind of waste to some degree in investment. So I think this is an interesting topic and the Paragon system is definitely going to be the most in-depth system that Diablo 4 has and is worth talking about and considering and talking and talking and talking because this is where the theory crafters um, and people like myself, we're going to dive into here and see what we can come up with in terms of the numbers of what rare nodes are the best, what glyph sockets can be potentially really good and what your builds are going to entail, which is fortunate for us because, well, this is why we have to separate the 1 to 50 leveling builds and the other builds in the game, because this is where your end game builds are going to be built around, right? Massive damage increasing, massive survivability increasing, or just massive bonuses in general from your glyphs. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is something that I'm really, really excited about. I haven't had as much fun diving into sort of the end game upgrading systems as I have had in Diablo 4. If you guys are interested in more Diablo 4 content, there's going to be a ton of videos coming in the next week slash three weeks. Um, and so be sure to sub if you guys are interested and I'll see you all for the next one.